In today's video, I have a vertical pellet smoker and I do an unboxing and an assembly on it. Hey, this is Ricer from Dead Broke Barbecue, Wisconsin, and welcome back to the channel. But if you're new here, we try to help you enhance and amplify your backyard barbecue fun. So you might as well subscribe to the channel. Now this Pellet Pro Vertical 2300 is an incredible cooker. I'm telling you, there's plenty of space and all of you new beginning caterers or guys that are thinking about doing it, this might be the cooker for you. So grab your spectacles and that manual. We're gonna amplify some backyard barbecue fun. Today we're gonna to do an unboxing and an assembly on the Pellet Pro Vertical 2300 from Smoke Dad. And in full disclosure, Smoke Daddy sent me the Pellet Pro Vertical to do a complete and honest review using it. And I am incredibly excited to get this vertical pellet cabinet smoker fired up because there's so many times when you just don't have quite enough room in a standard pellet grill. And like they say, that extra inch can feel like a mile. Now the Pellet Pro Vertical has 10 cubic feet of cooking area. So that means I'm gonna have plenty of room for my meat. Huh? You know what I'm saying. Yeah. So what am I waiting for? Let's open up this meat locker. Now you're gonna need a good sharp knife. And if you don't have one, go buy one. And then just start cutting the straps. Get your betting money out. Let's go ahead and see if I actually put this in the right position so it opens up on the front side this time. Always be careful when you're cutting down on the top because you never know what's inside there. So awesome, right on top we got our warranty and our owner's manual. You got a couple pieces of styrofoam so your kids can play Star Wars later tonight. Now just go ahead and start cutting down the box but at two corners, there's actually staples that are keeping this cardboard together. Now be careful that you do not stick your knife in too deep. You do have a little bit of room in the corner but you don't wanna go ahead and scratch up your new smoker. And once you get it out a little ways, you can just start ripping it off if you want. And just like that, it's open. Hey, look kids, you can go ahead and play Fortnite. And if you put your money down that I was gonna open it up backwards, you're a winner. Because I gotta go ahead and spin it around again. Thank God I got my good buddy Jake along because I'm gonna need some help to turn it around. I'll get it. My way. There we go. Thanks, Jake. Using the view. Now we'll just get this fancy plastic off real quick. Jensen, put this in the garage so it doesn't blow down the street. Oh. Now down on the bottom, we've got some parts. Let's get those out first. We got three temperature gauges. We got our grease trap pan, and that stays right on the bottom. Now the Vertical 2300 has those really good door latches. It's a good quality build, and you can see that they're adjustable as you use this. But we'll just go ahead and pop that off. And we'll pop open the bottom one and we'll open it up. Looks like we got a lot more fun inside this cabinet. We got our hardware and our tools and a new probe. Now this is packed very tight and be careful when you start pulling some of this stuff out because it might shift a little bit. We have a tray and some type of little flap that was with it. We got four stainless steel racks. This I'm guessing is a heat diffuser or some type of drip pan. Inside this box, we got our fan. You got your pellet hopper safety grate. We have two handles. One is for the door and one is to help push the vertical around. We got four decent sized casters. We got our pellet hopper, but make sure you set this off to the side gently. You got a nice cover for it, or as I like to call it, a blanket. This is our grease catch, and the other one earlier is actually a baffle. And finally, we have our heat deflector. Now let's start getting this vertical 2300 put together. It's time to start the assembly process. First, we're gonna wanna get this door closed and latched up. Now we're gonna have to flip it on its backside so we can get the casters on. But first you're gonna wanna go ahead and break this cardboard. Now I already did it on the backside, but you're just gonna wanna break this down. And I would watch out for these staples. I'd pull these off too. Cause you don't wanna get it scratched up. So when you're doing this part, you can do it by yourself. But if you have your trusty assembling mate, like how I've got Jake, it is easier to do it with two people. Now one really nice feature is that they have these tie downs on top of the vertical smoker. So if you wanna haul it around in your truck, you got something to hook your straps to. But we're gonna use these to help us turn it on its backside. Grab this hook and then grab on the bottom and you're gonna wanna start picking it up and set it right flat like that. There we go. Now you have two types of casters. You have one that swivels and you have one that's just stationary. 
I would suggest that you put your swivel end over by your handle, and that's gonna be on this right-hand side where our handle is gonna go. So I'm just gonna start by putting the swivel ones on first. Now Smoke Daddy sends you this nice little socket wrench, and I'm telling you, this is gonna be a time saver for sure. They also send you a regular box end wrench. This one's gonna work a lot easier for this task. Now they already have pre-threaded nuts mounted to the bottom of this, and that's awesome. It makes it a lot easier. We'll just start off by getting one finger tight. Just make sure you thread it in far enough so it doesn't fall off. And now we can go ahead and get the next one. Now you can also lock the swivel casters and that's a great feature because you hate it when it starts rolling around on you if you got a little bit of a decline or an incline like I have here. Now just go ahead and repeat it and do the same thing. Now on the left side I'm putting my stationaries. You can put them however you want to. That's a great thing. If you want to put them both on the back side, you can. And again, just get the bolts in and get them finger tight. Now let's put some torque to those bolts. Now you don't have to get carried away when you're putting a little torque on it. Get it about where it's just kind of snug. And what I learned in shop class is you want to always tighten them in a star pattern. Kind of like putting on a tire. All right, I got my casters on and thank you, Mr. Johnsrud, for teaching me back in 1986 how to tighten up some bolts. Now we're gonna get ready to put on the hopper. So you're gonna wanna get this back on its casters first. Grab it, pick it up. Just set it right like this. And then you got the young man that carries away the skid. Kids are worth something. Now this is gonna be our toughest part of the assembly. Now we gotta go ahead and put on our hopper. You're just gonna to wanna to bring it over on this side. And we got a couple little things that we gotta do. Now you wanna pick this up gently and we're just gonna start getting it through the insert. And then once we get it in this far, I'm just using my foot to hold it up. We're gonna to wanna to get our probe hooked up and it only gets snapped in one way. You'll see the groove and voila. And you can tuck a little bit of the excess back up this channel a little bit if you want to. Now obviously today Jake is helping me out with this assembly, but if you don't have somebody to help you out, you're going to want to use some of that styrofoam and build up that hopper to keep it level so you can get these bolts started. Thanks Jake man, I couldn't do this without you. Well, don't you got two kids? They're lazy. So now we're just going to end up opening up our door. Unfortunately I don't have a lot of light down here to show you inside the vertical where these bolt holes are but we'll try to show you right now. Now hopefully it'll come out on the camera that you can see that there is a couple bolt holes down here. The one good thing on the hopper, they are pre-threaded nuts. All right, I got this one. First try. Putting on that hopper is not the easiest task, but just be patient and make sure that you do not cross-thread those bolts. Now it's time to go ahead and put our three thermometers right on the door. And you can see one, two, three. So just open up the door. Go ahead and take off your nut and washer, and then you're just gonna line it up and stick it right through the hole. And now we just get our washer in, and you're gonna have to wiggle it around a little bit to get it on there. Get our nut on. Again, take your time. Just gonna wanna get these finger tight, so just go ahead and stick your thumb in there and kinda hold it a little bit the best you can, and then just get it spun. And it, you're gonna feel it tighten up and we'll leave it right about like that. Just repeat the process with the other two and make sure that you do your best to get these temperature gauges lined up. So our thermometers are mounted, now let's go ahead and put on our door handle. And Smoke Daddy sends you some longer bolts, so make sure that you're looking at your hardware because we actually were supposed to use these for the hopper also. Now the ones that I use, they still work, but they were a little trickier, but these bolts are longer, so putting on that hopper, use these instead. First thing is, is just go ahead and put the bolt through. Then go put your little fancy little plate on, or your collar, and then just screw in the bolt. And you can see that this washer is a little bigger than the other ones that they send, and you don't have to worry about them falling down through this double wall. Get this first bolt so you got a little bit of play in it so you can line up on the bottom. Same thing, get our bolt through, put on your collar, and then just put your handle up there and start threading it in. Then just take your wrench and finish them off. And you don't have to get them crazy tight because you're gonna start sucking in this double wall. Just get them snug. All right, I got the door done. Let's go ahead and put on our side handle. This will be the same process. Just go ahead and stick your bolt through, put on your collar, and then just start tightening it up. Repeat on the other side. 
and just wiggle them a little bit because you're gonna wanna make sure that you're not gonna be cross threading. Now earlier I called this a tray, but it's actually your side vent and your dampener. And that's gonna go on right here and they already have the bolts in there. You're just gonna have to back them out before you go ahead and mount this. So right here they already have the bolts all mounted but we'll just start taking them back and them out. And you can see that, that there are already pre-threaded inserts there. Now here's the hole from the chamber, but you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have the closed end part towards the bottom because here's the top of the vent. So after you get them all finger tight, just go ahead and give them a good snug. Now on the dampener part, make sure it looks like this and your bolts are gonna go on top. Same thing, just get her lined up and start tighten it up. And we'll snug this dampener up a little bit too. Now put in your heat diffuser and that sits right above the fire pot. You can see down at the bottom that there's a couple angles that are attached to the sides and the heat diffuser has a notch through it and that's where it's just going to sit right in. Just like that. Now put in your drip pan and this slotted section goes on the right hand side and it just fits in just like this. Now on this side there's a little lip that it's going to hook on and down here there's a little trough. Now it's time to get our probe mounted and we're using a Phillips screwdriver and they have two screws for it. Now you can see that it's taped to the wall. We'll get the tape off and we're gonna wanna get this stuck and tucked right back in here first. Start lining it up, take one of your screws and they do already have these inserts threaded. And then just go ahead and finish it off by tightening up. Grab your four stainless steel grates and get them in. And they slide in real easy. And you'll see right down here that there is a nice little lip and you're gonna want that up because that's what you use to go ahead and pull them back out. Now this baffle plate can be used to have two separate cooking zones in the vertical. So you could use it to separate the cooking chambers or you could use it just on top as a warming area. If you're only gonna use two racks, it could go here. Or if you just had something that you wanted to keep warm, you could put it up on this rack. Or you could use it to cook some casseroles or even some desserts. And we'll just put this rack right up on top here, like so. Now I'm gonna put on the optional circulation fan because I figure you might as well because what if I wanna do a real low and slow cook or maybe if you get some inconsistency, you just turn it on and maybe that gets the air flowing better so you can cook the same temps at top and the bottom. Now our first step is we're gonna go ahead and take off the fan housing. And that means you got eight screws to take out. Now again, this is optional, but I'm planning on doing some sausage in this and it might help the circulation for it. We'll see. When you get the eight screws out, just go ahead and take off the cover and then you'll just take the four screws out of the plate. Make sure you put this in the junk drawer someday because you never know. You might want to take that circulating fan off because if you ever decide to take the circulating fan off, these four holes, well, heat's gonna escape from that area too. I'll just go ahead and line it up and you got the shaft right here and that's gonna go in the center of it. Now they send you four other screws with some washers and some lock washers. Go ahead and start getting our screws in there and then just repeat and remember that these are already pre-threaded. So that makes it really simple to mount this. Snug them up a little bit. Now we can go ahead and put our housing back on and then just get the screws back in it. Now let's put on the fan blade. And this nut is reverse thread, so it's not righty-tighty, lefty-loosey, it's lefty-tighty, righty-loosey. Obviously, they don't have a term for that, but call it dyslexic. So now you can see our shaft right here. We'll go ahead and put our fan in, and remember the blades are down, and then take your nut and it's lefty-tighty. And then just take your wrench and give it a little bit of a snug. Now we'll put in our grease tray and you'll just get it kind of set in there and it fits in pretty snug just like that finally we're just going to put on our lower door and that just hangs on here put my baffle back in and the other grate now that's our assembly of the pellet pro vertical 2300 it's pretty simple it took us about an hour of actual work time but if we're looking at when we're filming eh, it was about an extra hour and that's normal. Now the next time you see me, I'm going to be doing the burn off on the Smoke Daddy Vertical Cabinet Smoker. There. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and become a subscriber. Turn on that notification bell because you don't want to miss my next video. I know you don't. And I want to thank all of you new subscribers. But I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next video. I don't know, we'll see. We gotta turn it. Why? Okay, good. Good.
in my back pocket and you know a guy thinks he can just rip things off sometimes and get stuck. Alright, grab that. Don't just stare. <laughs>